Z score, well, the Z score for this guy here, okay, the Z score associated with this is 1.64, and the Z score associated with this guy here is 1.6, 1 1.65. 1 the Z score I require is halfway between these two, so the Z that I require is equal to 1.64 plus 1.65 divided by 2, which gives us a value of 1.645 is my Z score. So what we now know is this, is that a Z score of 1 point, so Z is equal to 1.645, has 0 0.95 of the area to the left hand side. Okay? Which means it has 5% of the area to the to the right hand side. So this Z score here now is 1.645, and this one over here through symmetry is minus 1.645. So now we're nearly there, okay? So we've just actually identified yeah, uh, that the Z score that we require, that the Z, okay, uh, is actually equal to uh, 1.645. So now we have all of our parameters and our statistics that we can feed into this particular formula. Okay? So now we can calculate our confidence interval. So once again, let's just actually write this down in a little bit more, uh, let's say, detail. Okay? Our parameters are x bar is equal to 495, the sample size is equal to 24, the population standard deviation is 7 mils, and the Z score for 90% confidence interval is 1.645. So our 90% confidence interval, our 90% confidence interval for the true population mean interval, okay, it can be calculated by its x bar minus z of sigma over the square root of n must be less than the true population mean, which must be less than x bar plus z of sigma over the square root of n. Okay. Now let's just keep in mind that this z here, I actually really mean z of alpha over two, okay? Because we've actually done it's half the confidence or half the significance has gone into the left and the right tail, but I'm not gonna put that notation in here. But filling in our values, this becomes 495 minus, well, Z is 1.645 times sigma, which is seven, and that needs to be divided by the square root of n, which is the square root of 24. That must be less than the population mean, which must be less than x bar, which is 495, plus z, which is 1.645, times sigma, which is 7, divided by the square root of 24. Okay, now what we'll do is, we'll do this calculation uh, in stages. You can actually see that this particular quantity here that this quantity here is the same as this quantity here. So we'll just do this calculation. Uh, so we'll do the, 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 the numerator first. Uh, so it's uh, 1.645 okay, multiplied by 7 gives us a value of 11.515. So this becomes 495 minus 11.515 divided by the square root of 24 must be less than mu, must be less than 495 plus 11.515 divided by the square root of 24, okay? Let's do our division. I'm going to divide this by the square root of 24. That gives us a value of, well, let's go to three decimal places. It gives us a value of 2.350. So this becomes 495 minus 2.350, must be less than mu, must be less than 495, plus 2.350, okay? Uh, so let's do the subtraction, so it's 495 minus 2.350, gives us a value of 492.65, must be less than mu, must be less than, well, when we add this onto this, it gives us 497.35, okay? And that's all done. So what we've actually effectively done is this, is that we've calculated a lower bound, 492.65 mils, and we've calculated an upper bound, 497.35 mils, okay? And through this particular process, okay, what we know is that we're 90% confident that the true fill of these cans, or the true uh, filling process, the true average fill of the cans, yeah, is actually between 492 mils and 497 
uh, mills. And we're 90% confident about that. But let's just keep in mind that we could be wrong. The population mean might actually fall outside of these particular bounds. But that should only happen approximately 10% of the time. So from an interval perspective, from the interval, the interval, what we're saying is this, is that we have 492.65 and we have 497.35. We're saying that we've got a 95% a 90 confidence, yeah, okay, that the true mean, that the true mean of the population is between these two values okay but we might be wrong okay the true mean could still reside out here okay but it should only reside out here okay in these particular re regions approximately 10 percent of the time okay uh, so guys uh, hopefully this was somewhat intuitive uh, now in this particular example uh, we used a, we constructed a 90% confidence interval where we knew what the population standard deviation was. Okay. Uh, in another video, we'll do the same calculation, but this time we will assume that we don't know the population standard deviation. And we'll estimate the population standard deviation using the sample standard deviation. Now, in one of our previous videos, we, we have already shown that the sample standard deviation, that its expected value, Okay. Or sorry, more importantly, that the sample standard deviation is an unbiased estimator of the population standard deviation. So we can actually make that swap out. So guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope this video uh, uh, detailing how to construct a 90% confidence interval it was somewhat helpful. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.